Hey folks, it is winter solstice today here in Ohio, and that always inspires me to create something new. Today, I'm gonna head in and make some lip balm and hand salve from some of the beeswax that I rendered in the last week. And so this is a fun process, takes a while, and I'll be sure to link that video just in case you wanna watch it. And so the process of making lip balm could not be any easier. It just involves melting beeswax along with some oils. I have an infusion of calendula flowers and olive oil here and chamomile flowers in avocado oil that I'll be using. All of these things are really good for the lips and the skin. I've also got some cocoa butter, vitamin E, and a couple other things that I'll be adding. And so I can't wait to get this process started so I can show you step-by-step step how to make it. I like to measure all ingredients by weight in grams because it's more accurate. Now this little coffee warmer hot plate comes in very handy for different projects, especially when I'm using beeswax. It doesn't get really hot, but it keeps things liquid. Now I'm just using it here in this first stage to get a head start on the beeswax while I measure everything else out. It takes a little longer to melt than anything else. But I will gently melt the beeswax and shea butter, cocoa butter, and the solid fats in a double boiler. I have a variety of wax melting double boiler pots for making these kind of products. Beeswax tends to make its mark on everything and so I have dedicated equipment just for working with it. Now the infused oils are so easy to make. I made these throughout the year as I had time. Calendula and chamomile are flowers that are a joy to grow as they attract so many types of pollinators. And don't worry, I leave plenty of flowers for the insects. I pick the flower heads just after the dew dries in the morning and I just let them air dry in the house. I don't use a dehydrator. It is very important to make sure that they are completely dry before processing them. They may cause mold to form. When they're ready, I simply add the dried flowers to a mason jar and cover with the oils of my choice. In this case, I used olive oil for the calendula flowers, which have great healing properties for the skin. I gently heat them on the hot plate for about 12 hours, then store covered until I'm ready to use them. I also do the same thing with chamomile, which I infused with avocado oil. But you can really use any edible oils here, whatever you might have on hand or like to use. Grapeseed oil, sweet almond oil, there are many that are good for the skin. In fact, you can mix and match most of these ingredients as long as you basically follow the simple ratio. One part beeswax, one part solid cocoa butter or shea butter, and two parts of any high quality edible oil. The vanilla oil was made by slicing about 10 vanilla pods lengthwise, then I cover them with sunflower coconut oil blend. And I use the same procedure to make some vanilla extract, only I used alcohol instead of oil. I put the melting pot right over simmering water and just gently melt everything and stir occasionally until it's fully incorporated. Now you can blend the liquids with the solids right off the bat or you can melt the solids first. Just be sure to stir well, make sure everything's blended. It's important to keep the heat rather low and stay close by to prevent burning. I use one of these handy lip balm trays to help fill the tubes. These are really convenient if you're making a large batch like I am. This holds 50 tubes. I'll put the link down in the description for the one that I use. The lip balm tubes fit really snugly so there's no gaps. And the tray really helps to minimize spills. I'm transferring this batch into another boiler pot to make it a little bit easier to pour. And I just carefully pour the mixture into empty lip balm containers or these lip balm tubes with the tray. This should be done pretty quickly before the mixture begins to harden. If it does harden, place the measuring cup back into the double boiler and heat it up slowly while stirring the mixture. This again is where my little hot plate comes in really handy. The tray has a lip around it, so if you over pour anything, you can simply just scrape it off. For the tubes I wanted to keep for myself, I wanted to add a little sunscreen, and so I used non-nano zinc oxide. Zinc oxide provides UV protection primarily by absorption of UV light. Zinc oxide is ocean and coral reef safe. Non-nano zinc is biodegradable mineral-based sunscreen. And non-nano just means the particles are larger than 100 nanometers, making them safer for marine life compared to the nanoparticles, which are smaller. Now, if using, it's helpful to mix the zinc oxide with a bit of the oil until it forms a paste. And then I stir this into the main mixture until it's fully incorporated. I rubbed in just a little on my hand. I wanted to make sure that it dried clear. And I was pleased with it. Sometimes it leaves a white cast. 
I poured 40 tubes with the plain lip balm base before adding the zinc and the tint. Tint's completely optional. I just wanted to match some up with the type that I usually use. And I added powdered mica to get to the color that I was going for. And I just did this in the last five tubes plus a few extra. I didn't use any measurements here. I just kept mixing until I got the color right. And you don't have to have one of these fancy trays. If you just have a small batch you want to make or have extra like I do, you can just secure some of the tubes with an elastic band. Then I just make sure everything is cool before I cap them. And unfortunately my printer was not working at the moment and so I could not put cute little labels on them. As always, I appreciate you watching. Thanks for stopping by.